November is always a big month for game, and it's about to hit hard. Hi, folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 games we are excited to be playing in November 2019. Starting off at number 10 is Sniper Ghost Warrior Contract. Now, the thing about this game is it retains the same kind of gameplay that you've seen in the Sniper Ghost Warrior series, which started as a sequel to Sniper Art of Victory, the first Ghost Warrior coming out in 2010, moves away from the open world gameplay and moves into a more mission-based format, which I think, to be clear, is not necessarily a bad thing. This game takes place in Siberia and does have a survival element as well as a stealth element, requiring you not just to snipe but also to do silent takedowns and infiltrate secret bases. Now obviously the focus is on sniping still, which relies on the development of mechanics this series has put forward over the years, and we look forward to seeing how that shakes out. Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts comes to PC, PS4, and Xbox One on November 22nd. Moving on to number 9, Black Sad Under the Skin is an adventure game that takes place in the world of the comic series, which takes place in New York City during the 1950s. In a lot of ways, the game looks somewhere between Telltale Games and L.A. Noir, and it particularly leans into the noir aspect of it, as does the comic. Although I can't say that I'm particularly familiar with the comic, I'm vaguely aware of it. I can say that the visual style seems to have been lifted right out of it, which is very cool because it's got a very distinct visual style to it. The game's story revolves around a boxing club owner who has died suspiciously, with this club owner's daughter approaching the title character, John Blacksad, and of course the investigation of said death. Honestly, I think it's going to be an interesting game. The developer who is making it is known for point-and-click adventure games, but this is a direct control one, so I have a feeling it will actually end up feeling quite a bit like L.A. Noir in some ways. But the gameplay is said to be mostly choice-based, with some quick-time events. Black Side is coming to PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One November 5th, and it will be hitting the Nintendo Switch quote-unquote sometime by the end of the year. Coming in at number 8 is Planet Zoo, a spiritual successor to Zoo Tycoon, and does the same kind of upgrades to the idea that the creators of the game Frontier Developments did in making their spiritual successor to Roller Coaster Tycoon entitled Planet Coaster, which is a game that oriented itself around animal behavior and learning about animals while still giving you the same kind of theme park-esque experience, the managerial stuff. But this looks like a big upgrade from the previous Zoo Tycoon game, particularly in terms of AI. The animals get a very complex AI system in this game. From what we've seen, you'll have to deal with various animals escaping, attending to the needs of animals, creating environments that work well for them, and honestly, it seems like a lot of fun. I've always liked the Tycoon games, and I thought that Planet Coaster was actually a pretty good development of it. It maybe wasn't miles ahead of the best Roller Coaster Tycoon game, but it was definitely an evolution. And I'm really looking forward to playing Planet Zoo when it comes out on PC on November 5th. Coming in at number 7 is Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, which comes in as a remaster of Age of Empires 2 The Age of Kings, and I just want to go ahead and say, as far as remastering this game, they're not playing around. This is a game that looks significantly nicer. The graphics have been upgraded to 4K. Everything from water, to textures, to buildings, to just everything looks a lot nicer. And that's great, because Age of Empires is a phenomenal RTS that really deserves its time in the limelight, so to speak, even now. And this remaster does something that I think is very cool. The original AI had a tendency to cheat to be competitive, and a new one has been made that doesn't need to, but you can actually choose between them. That's a neat feature as they've also gone ahead and pitted the two AIs against each other, and the new AI easily beats the old one. Now that doesn't mean it's necessarily significantly harder, it just means it knows what it's doing and doesn't need to cheat to beat you. That's cool because I remember being frustrated by that actually. Age of Empires is hitting Microsoft Windows on the 14th of November. Coming in at number 6, Need for Speed Heat, which is a new open world Need for Speed. It's not the first of its kind, but it does look to be a very good version of it to me. It takes place in Miami. It doesn't play around. It is going for Miami, Miami, Miami. As far as its visuals go, the cover is like, oh yeah, this is a Miami game. 
But something I find particularly interesting is they've removed the day-night cycle in favor of the player being able to select whether they want it to be day or night. This is interesting because the game actually differs at night, giving you illegal street races that only take place at night. On top of the illegal street races, the cops are also more aggressive at night, and the goal of your interactions with the police will be getting back to your safe house and basically getting away from them. This is actually the 24th Need for Speed game in 25 years, and they are celebrating the anniversary with this game. I think it looks a lot like it could actually be a good celebratory title. I love the visuals that they're showing for this game, and I'm looking forward to playing Need for Speed Heat on PC, PlayStation 4, or Xbox One on November 8th. Moving on to number five, Shenmue 3 is a game that has been in development hell for over a decade, and it's extremely exciting to see this game happen. Shenmue is one of these games that influence open world games to such a massive degree. Yes, Grand Theft Auto 3 is probably the granddaddy of all of them. However, what Shenmue did was create a living, breathing world that you could occupy and sort of integrate yourself into in a genuine time cycle that just gave you just an endless amount of depth to play with and get involved in. Shenmue is at its core a revenge story about a murdered dad, but it's also a forerunner for Yakuza in a lot of ways. But the game is also drastically improved visually speaking, and it's very cool to see. Personally, I was a little less invested in the second game than the first, so the massive improvements we'll be getting from the third are something that I'm probably a little bit more interested in personally. And I'm really excited to play Shenmue 3 on PC or PS4 on November 19th. And at number four is Red Dead Redemption 2, the PC version, which people have been anxiously awaiting. I have personally been anxiously awaiting. I am more than happy to get myself in on the PC version of this game. It is, of course, one of the most sprawling and detailed open worlds ever created, especially when we're talking about wilderness-oriented open worlds. It's such a well-occupied by wildlife and plant life, etc. Just a beautiful open world with so much going on in it at any given time that I'm really excited to see what it looks like on the PC because as we all know, the graphical jump from when Grand Theft Auto V jumped to PC was pretty big. Now, I'm not 100% sure it's going to be as big this time around, but we have seen preliminary footage and the textures are significantly higher resolution and that's really cool to see. It looks beautiful. Like, the console version looks beautiful. It's frankly one of the prettiest games of all time. And Red Dead Redemption 2 is of course going to be a huge favorite on the PC when it hits November 5th. Coming in at number three is Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield, the latest Pokemon games, of course. These are the more traditional, full-blown Pokemon games, not so much the Let's Go versions of the game, and they're looking to be pretty sweet. There are a few new features, including the cooperative raid encounters that we first saw in Pokemon Go, temporarily giant Pokemon, the ability to transfer your Pokemon to other games that use the Pokemon Home service, such as Pokemon Go, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, etc., etc., and a new mechanic I'm particularly interested in called Poke Jobs. They're apparently just fun little diversions that can result in experience or rare items, and I think that sounds good. And as somebody who's enjoyed these games a lot over the years, Pokemon Sword and Shield to me looks like it's going to be a great upgrade to the series. It's hitting Switch November 15th. Coming in at number two, it is Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and let's just go ahead and say, not only did Jake get a bit of a hands-on where we've gotten a lot more information about the game from him, but just taking the information he's relayed to us and sort of applying it to what we've seen of the game has made me a lot more excited about this game. You see, instead of being kind of like Force Unleashed, which frankly, if you're going to do, why not do Force Unleashed 3? Instead, we're getting a kind of Star Wars Dark Souls-like game. Not necessarily as difficult, mind you, although we don't know how the game plays in latter stages, but we're getting kind of a multi-world Metroidvania Dark Souls. And to me, that just sounds incredibly interesting, not even bringing Star Wars into the equation, but we're bringing Star Wars into the equation. As we get closer to Jedi Fallen Order's release, I am getting much more interested in it. I'm excited, and I will definitely be playing Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order when it hits on PC, PS4, and Xbox One on the 15th. 
And finally, at number one is Death Stranding, which is sure to confuse people even after they understand it entirely. However, it looks like the idea of this game is that we're kind of looking at a, an interdimensional reunification of the United States, now known as the United Cities. The idea of this game is reconnecting all of the isolated cities and bringing down walls. And frankly, rather than trying to explain exactly what's going on here, because even though I have the information, I'm not 100% sure I get it even at this point. This game looks like an absolute mind job. And I'm saying job to avoid getting demonetized. I can't wait to get deep into this game. And I think to some great extent, we're going to be in for a big treat. I think this is a game that is going to examine not just the political climate of the United States, but indeed the sociological climate of the world. I know this sounds corny, but I think this game is going to teach us something about ourselves. I just have a weird feeling. And it's Kojima. How can you not be excited for a new Kojima game in 2019? Now is the time. Death Stranding is hitting on the PS4 on November 8th. And a quick bonus for you, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020. It's the first since the 2016 Rio one. Let's just be honest, Mario and Sonic at the Olympics is one of the better party games. And they have added a retro mode, which allows you to play as old school Mario versus old school Sonic, which honestly is weirdly satisfying to look at. It looks like a lot of fun. There's swimming, gymnastics, soccer, karate, skateboarding, surfing, climbing, boxing, and a lot more than just that. Honestly, Sega always does a good job with these, and this looks like a fun one. That's hitting November 5th on the Switch. What are you looking forward to playing in November? I know I'll be playing a lot of the games from this list. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. And if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. So click subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.